Yeah, I, I just want to give an update on what's going on at the city. You may or may not have read that um, we applied for a grant from the FDOT to look at operations, future costs, maintenance requirements for the, the streetcar. We have been given a million dollar grant with matching $250,000 for from the city of Tampa to match that. We are uh, meeting with DOT to write a scope in June, and then we will go out to hire someone. Again, because the, the whole issue is that we want to make sure that whatever we adopt as a, a plan and a schedule is um, sustainable, that people are used to a certain schedule that we deliver. And again, uh, you know, we've, had, we've had issues with the fact with, with lack of room with, with cutback and people have stopped using it. So we want to make sure that what we do is correct. Our uh, transportation is putting money in the budget for next year for some of the maintenance requirements and the year after that. Again, our part of um, the delay in action by us is that although the economy has recovered, it would save our homes, uh, the cash flow to the city, as well as to heart, has not recovered. Uh, this year, we'll probably have $32 million less in property taxes than we did in 2007. And it was as high as $50 million a couple of years ago. It's probably $32 million this year. Uh, other sources of funding, like the communication tax and a couple other taxes, have been whittled away in Tallahassee. And so uh, the, the city is being very conservative about until we know exactly how much money we're getting in property taxes to be able to say, we can do this, this, and this. And so we are being uh, slowly delivered in this process. So we will have a scope meeting with FDOT uh, next month, and again, We'll go out to the market and um, with that scope and work out a plan which is not only a uh, you know what makes sense as far as placement of track and expansion of expansion makes sense but uh, scheduling and uh, operational costs with a sensitivity analysis on based on ridership as well as um, fee structures and expansion options Good, that's all right. Um, so you probably will put this out of the street in September? That would probably be a good guess. Right. Yeah. So would be like the study starts in December, January? Probably. And last week? I, I, I'm not sure about the duration. I mean, it's a pretty, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. It should result in an extension plan. It's a, we're looking for a holistic outlook for the, the streetcar. I mean, we, we, there have been patchwork quilts up. You know, here, here's here's where you could go and some expansion plans. But again, you know, when you talk to the people that did the expansion plans, what do you have in there for right of way acquisition? Well, we didn't include that. Uh, well, what would operation in, operational cost impacts be? Well, we we didn't really put that in the study. So the idea is to have a holistic study that will tell us all of the facets and responsibilities and obligations that will go. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I'm just thinking out loud that, that really you shouldn't, you won't know what this study is saying until, I would say, summer, <coughs> summer of next year, or all this. Um, so, meanwhile, you, I know the mayor wants to dissolve us, and we were kind of waiting patiently see how you want to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, the city's trying to figure that out and wonder if you're making progress. You kind of need somebody on board on your side to replace us. Mm -hmm. And we're reaching the point where you know, we would do as the city um, have to negotiate with the operating contract, which will be the budget, uh, needs to determine the budget. Right.
time and then some more time. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I understand all that. And government is no longer rushing or pushing through, but, but we're getting really close. Next month would really be the month that we would start talking about the operating budget and, and have a sense of whether the city, you know, when we had this conversation last year, you guys, all of us, but not the thing you couldn't really put significant money in the operating budget to improve the hours. So you really need to decide and probably tell us or tell everybody else we're not here. I'll come back next month with some good Okay, good. Good. Excellent. That's good. questions? I mean, this is, you know, I really appreciate this. I appreciate you coming today. Because we're just kind of nervous. It's no longer a cookie jar, right? it's a crumb jar. It's a crumb jar. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much part of the course, too. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, yes, Just the, the angels are piling on. Um, the, uh, I mean, I just want to reiterate that, too, as, as the city moves forward, you know, what, what the plans are with this and coming in. I, I, I think you can share with my book, which one to a critical juncture, is there anything we can do you know, to help move that forward? That's a deeper the city wants to go. And my main concern is to share with whoever, all of us together, the city and this board, are the stewards of what this is and, and taking good care of it and making sure that you know, we're watching out the best interest of the street are. So my, my input is only, you know, how do we help get this to the finish line of something that in the end is in the best interest of the street car and, 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 and how it's operated and hopefully expanding and providing better service to the community and that's our ultimate goal and we just want to see that so I know I'm saying stuff you already know but uh, so it's it's, yeah yeah mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that you know, we're all we're all together and that's that's really our goals and objectives mm -hmm. David in your absence um, since Bob was here he's share with us the uh, city's intention to do a kind of an extension of operations and funding study um, which will we'll get started in the fall. And that um, he is hopeful he can come back next month with a, with a plan um, of how the city would like to take things over and move on with the new budget and the public relations and ask for some. So I don't know if there's anything you have to ask and give you that. Uh, no, that sounds great. Uh, apologize for being late. That's not going to help as well. So, Mr. Seward, you're the executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it was a good segue into, um, I have two items. Uh, the first is budget preparations. Uh, pursuant to the agreement that is in place right now, I'm obligated to support a, a proposed budget, which I plan on doing next month, um, based on the current construct uh, that we exist in today. Uh, it will be flat with no additional service. It will reflect the service that we have today. Um, we will engage the city over the next 30 days on discussions with um, anticipated CRA revenues and so forth. Um, but until something truly does change, we're still obligated um, to produce that budget because it is linked to the hard budget, which is now in the first stages of going for um, its board for approval. Good, good, excellent. Um, the second uh, item I have, um, something that we have tried uh, working on um, in the past, we're going to test it uh, with smartphones and uh, square technology um, for our special events along the street farm line, uh, particularly here in Gasparilla. Um, uh, our, our friends in Jacksonville, JTA, they have a specific um, shuttle service that they use during Jaguar games. And to expedite the boarding and fare collection, they arm their um, staff with smartphones and squares they stand out through the line, swipe their cards, and meet people really quick. So we are going to test it. Um, I was hoping for some lightning games. Hopefully there'll be quite a few more lightning games that we can uh, possibly um, test some of it. Um, but we're looking at uh, hopefully being able to have this ready for Gasparilla so we can move those lines much, much quicker than, than we have in the past due to um, the capacity of our TBMs. Um, so something new we're going to try and cool. see if it works. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that concludes my report. That's correct. Thank, Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, sales marketing today? Yes, I am not worried. Uh, she does exist. She was here two months ago. But um, she it did report, um, she sold one front panel for eight months for store right self storage. So it's a new advertiser for the streetcar. And um, even though it's not much, it's 150 per month. And um, I know you and the new house that are really like it. Um, it's an extra $720 removing to the streetcar. So it's very new. Discussion items. Uh, 2015 Tico Line Streetcar System Fest. Marco. Good afternoon, Marco Sandusky, uh, manager of EDO Community Programs for Heart. Um, we wanted to give you an opportunity to, to discuss your intentions as a as a board in terms of this year and the Streetcar Fest. As you know, in the past, um, we have done a streetcar uh, fest event that celebrates the streetcar. Uh, with a reduced fare and some events um, in uh, in Central Ebor, and we wanted to find out from you your intentions in terms of interest in, in continuing with this kind of event um, this year, and get some direction in terms of of where we want to go with Streetcar Fest. We know that in the past it's been very successful. It was especially successful on the ten year anniversary and I know in the past there was some discussion that uh, perhaps streetcar fest would be maybe best reserved for those more momentous um, types of uh, uh, celebrations um, and uh, we wanted to get your sense in terms of where how to proceed well what's the point here are you are you what are you asking us we, we do this annually you're suggesting we don't do it annually well, we, we know there's been some discussion in the past about perhaps um, reserving it for the 10 year, maybe the planning 15 years would be in 2017, um, and, and sort of building some momentum to a little bit bigger event. Um, we have looked at some of the data in terms of ridership, and we do see increases in ridership from the Streetcar Fest day, um, but it's been much more marketed in a, a bigger year, in a 10-year event. The ridership uh, last year, the information's in your packet, was about uh, 6,000. Uh, there's significant staff effort and time that goes into soliciting sponsorships, and there's been some, some challenge in soliciting getting sponsorships, uh, given some of the, the just the, the challenges in terms of the channel side area and, and, and Ebor. So, um, we wanted to find out from you in terms of where, where we should go with Street Car Fest. Sounds like you don't want to do it. <laughs> well, we, we want to we get a, a sense from you. We, we, uh, we see the, the value in particular in, in the reduced fare, and we think a lot of people come out for that. Uh, but there, we're not sure that that the streetcar event itself, that the fest event has been a big draw for folks uh, based on the participation we had last year and the year before. The 10 year anniversary, like I said before, was a, was a bigger event. Um, and, and we think that maybe in those milestone years, it could be an especially valuable uh, tool to, to celebrate the streetcar. Steve, can I ask you a question? Sure. You've been managing this event for quite some time. Sure. sure. Are, are you, what is Marco trying to tell us? I mean, I, I think what's been happening is because there's nothing along the line. Like for example, last year we took to 6,400 trips. Um, I think what Marco is outlining, the staff participation um, is, is hard and to get these grants and all of that. We changed the language last year to get, you know how we used to make it. Uh, it used to be two years ago that we would have to make a certain amount to recover the extra time and also um, the extra um, effort for staff time. Um, however, uh, last year we did put low down to 6,400, but we did, do, do two, we did get an extra grant. Um, there's been less participation along the line. Um, 
it's, it's YCDC or love it because you do get your ventures to see a difference. Um, but there, again, last year was particularly hard because there's nothing else. Um, so the question that becomes um, is that, you know, and, and I understand the politics, that Ebor City loves it. And, you know, we do, it is a day that we highlight the streetcar. So I, I all, all we've had, and I guess, I, and again, I'm not paraphrasing for Mark, but all we know is that the 10th anniversary does pull. Now, when we look at the numbers as, as what we're spending, it's actually not that much. It actually is about $10,000 out of the budget when all the proceeds come in. For, um, we do see, we have been seeing also that when we put up entertainment in, in Central Ebor, there's not a big draw for it. And partially it's because it's during the day, but we're limited in Central Ebor because of the noise ordinance later in the evening. So, but, in other words, to, but there's a lot of little whips with that because Central Ebor will not sponsor it unless there's something going on in Ebor. Right, so there's, there's a lot of political things. So I guess what, what, what Mark was trying to say in the discussion is, do we continue it every year? And I think it's as simple as that. Or do we just wait for milestones like a 10th or a 15th? And I think that's what's being put out on the table for discussion. And one thing that I would like to do, because we've done this before, if it is decided to go ahead and move annually, we'd like to go ahead to go ahead to go ahead, that sounded good. Um, we'd like to um, get the um, an action item to move it to go ahead and start the solicitation because we did that last May and that extra month helped because it was we were further off. We all think? I, I like it. I, I think it's something we really should be doing every year to keep the street hard from people. Uh, the different types of events that happen at each of the stops maybe need to be revamped and looked at again. Uh, because yes, it is pretty hot out there, and you've got a band going, you know, they're going to be not too happy for doing five or six hours of playing and then people sitting there to watch them. But maybe some different things can happen. But I, I like having this every year. Well, I'm not always a big fan of anything that has fest in its title, so, um, so you know, how do you, how do you repurpose it, I guess, is the question. You know, I'm sitting here wrapping my brain about the kinds of things I like going to, and the first thing that came to mind was like the Miles from Moffat event, so, you know, can you turn this into a ride along you know, that, that raises money for something, if somebody pays a fee, do it, and we ride along, and then you invite you know, somebody in the city at the end of the line to, to bring food on and to, you ride so many miles you get a plate of this or then it hat tricks pool come in and give you a hamburger if you ride so many miles during the day and we raise money or something get all the businesses to contribute. I mean I'm just looking at can we repurpose it to something that the community would embrace other than just focusing on the streetcars. Is, is it a partnership opportunities I guess? Yeah I, I think and um, I've we've talked about this in um, in a minor sense. Um, the downtown partnership has always been really good with us, is providing something around the other end of the line. Last year, we didn't have that support, even though they did give us a grant. So again, possibly, and again, and I've seen it with the Rough Riders when they just came back, that um, Vinick did open up Channel Side Bay Plaza to them. So if we could possibly approach, um, I forget what the real estate company is, to possibly do something if something happens along the line, I think there's a better shot of you know getting people on the street car too. So there are other things we can. Do you, do you think there's any difference in the amount of advertising and outreach that we have? We have. Yeah, we 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 really um, in fact. I think the amount of advertising, I think I would change what we're doing. Um, we've made a shift also on, um, in, in part, as to what we're doing. We've just experimented with our first 100% digital campaign, and, and it was, um, it moved the needle on one bus away. We got as many daily phone calls or daily usage in one month than we did in, five, in the past five months. So we did see quite a movement, and it's less expensive. But last year, 
Um, for example, let's see. Um, this is, um, this is, um, we spent about fifteen thousand dollars on iHeart Radio, but again, it was iHeart Radio and. Uh, WFLA and a couple of others, I would rebuy that and we focus that a little bit more digitally and not buy just the radio station. Um, we did use the bus tail, 10 bus tails, uh, and we did uh, 10 at day times. We did some different things. We did some electronic things like putting around the calendar of events of the week and the two weeks before on the Friday. So we did repurpose it and we did shape it. and. Um, we yeah, actually spent about twenty-one thousand dollars of it, of which we also got um, about thirteen thousand dollars worth of added value. So there was significant media attached to it. Gotcha. If I may, um, I, I wanted. To to, to state that the reason for this item is coming before you today is, is not because Heart Staff was evaluating the, the program or, or the FES or a desire to not do the work or continue with it. It was to engage um, the board in an event that has just repeated itself annually as, as part of the course. And based on the current environment in which the streetcar is operating, which there's some ambiguity to the future of, of where we're going, the commitment of staff time, the commitment of, of, of funding, um, the current state uh, of the economics along the southern component of the line, we felt that it, it, bringing this back up and as a discussion, instead of just a carte blanche, we're going to have a fast, is to engage the board and say, okay, we've been doing this. Here are all the dynamics that are changing in our environment today. Do we want to continue with it? If we do want to continue with it, we, we would like some direction to continue with it and then have that flexibility to make those marketing changes and to turn it into an event that would be successful. That makes sense, right. Does it have any value for sale of value? Participated every year and it's it's negligible. I mean, uh, we support everything that's, that's along the streetcar line and Chapman Side and downtown. Uh, but it, it's been in our impact on it. Does it really affect the business? No. Not, not that much. Okay. Wish I could say otherwise. That's no, fine. Um, well, how many? How many? You have a lot of staff that volunteer because nothing. We, we do have some that are paid. Um, it, it is minor. It came out to about fifteen hundred dollars in staff time, but it was minor. Well, that's there's still a lot of staff time that's contributed. There's there's about at least twenty five staff members yeah. during the different shifts, and um, not very many board members. So are you walking around? I do, but yeah. Um, I think it's a uh, well. Who knows where we'll be? Uh, this is one of those decisions that if we made, you, you you are. October. I always thought that it was um, a really nice thing to do for the community, and because I stood at a streetcar stop for a few hours um, and, and walked the line. Um, I hear a lot from um, people who are using it. A lot of people come and bring their kids and their parents, and you know, a lot of people ride it on that day because it's cheap. And they're using our solutions. It is a um, irony that, that the streetcar is pretty lively, e is lively. The channel district is impressive to look at, but there's not a lot of street movement. It's certainly on Channel Side Drive. The channel Side itself is still sort of half dead, and that may not be the case by the way. <coughs> and then there's not much happening unless there's a, a bed of a, a ring up, and then if the convention center is busy, but if it's not, that area is already sort of not busy. I mean, the bar no 
does well and e boats do well. And, and so, uh, and there are park events. I mean, in one sense, there are some dead spots. And in another, downtown is just much more lively than it used to be. My inclination would be to ask you to do it, though. Instead of just doing a single, because it, it is a grind getting enthusiasm up for this single event when there's a, a plethora of other things that you get tired to that I think would uh, make for a lot less heavy lifting. And you've done that in the past. Yeah, yes. And then what the issue was, it became more of a competitive thing. It became more of they ended up showing up at the other events because they weren't as close to the street crawl line as possible. I mean, if it was an Emily Arena event or something on Visa Check, um, then, then it would work probably better. But most of the events have been like the, uh, the food truck event. We did a dirt one day in Channel Side and it was too far away from no, the house. Right, right, so there was nothing that was close. So when we did, and we were hoping to get other events along the line, anything downtown except for possibly a river wall is, too, is still too far yeah. away from the Lightning Street Station. So those are the, some of the issues that we've had in the past. Yeah, I think a good example of some of these Lightning Game Watches, mm -hmm. you know, because that's right there, it's right on the line. That would be, that would be something that wouldn't be that difficult to tie to, but I mean, that's tomorrow, so mm -hmm. this afternoon. But that would be great, but... Um, I don't know, I, I think maybe put the thinking cap on looking at the calendar of events coming up in the future. Um, that, that is, and it, it doesn't have to be competitive because I just think that being part of something larger where there's two or three events that go on um, makes the, the streetcar line, streetcar fest, an enhancement to, to other uh, events. Well, that's true. And there, there would be nice to look at the event schedule just to, I mean, if we did it. There is an event that draws five or ten thousand people to Ebor City anyway. Yeah. Many people go to Ebor City for these festivals and we are I live there, so we have a lot of festivals. Yeah, I think it, in fact I, I think um, possibly moving it from October to more of a holiday event like the Ebor Holiday Spirit Parade or something during that where they already are drawn down to the line might work better than in the standalone in October where we do look at the calendar event. But the reason we've always done it in October was because it was the anniversary of yeah, the And that's the only reason that we've done it. We're the only people who actually know that. One more care. One more care. Exactly. Uh, you know, I think, yes, Sean. But I was just thinking about the festival thing. Um, ACC's campus has a stop right there, and we've done the Cuba Sandwich Festival. We have like the food vendors and all of that. You know, the streetcar is going to be getting a lot of attention to the ball, if for no other reason than it's still. This is a lot of people that are very interested in you know, the fact that the city is interested in moving forward with a serious look at what's going to be um, And everybody believes that So 
I would think that maybe we ought to consider doing it, but maybe we need to give you a little more help when we have that. I mean, the volunteer part is where that that part is spent the percentage of the project. But maybe we're planning on it or the fundraising. And then we need to find out. Thanksgiving roll. So we get caught into the Thanksgiving period and all of that, which actually we found detrimental. So the date that we were still looking at was October 18th, and I've already been um, the Ebor Saturday market. She does pretty well with over at the Cupcake Festival, and she was looking forward to doing it that again, yeah. as she did last year. Come to Jumping Park when they have an event there, you know, that whole stretch is just a lot of thousands of people who could easily be. Maybe order or whatever. Um, maybe we can get Abby and her husband to repeat their vows at the. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. Thank you for our anniversary. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the, party, the party setup is available. <laughs> Actually, if you don't mind, um, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chair, maybe we could set up a subcommittee um, with people that aren't even necessarily on this board. Have the time and, and focus on volunteering some efforts to station and program each of the stops. That would be of interest. I could at least vet it and see if there's people interested in assisting yeah, on that. I mean, I would be happy to be on your committee. Okay. I don't think it would be on your committee. And I would get lost. That would be on it. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's talk, just so you're aware, uh, in Tampa Attractions Association this year of doing a Halloween event and possibly doing like a pumpkin patch with uh, a hay rides and one half it up in Coach Open Park. Um, so that might be something that would fall within that time frame uh, that we talked about doing for a family event, but the details aren't worked out yet. So that's that's one possibility not to start in the future. That's correct. And, and the other thing is about when I go back to the for City and what they do, they do a pumpkin patch, which is very successful. It's been, it's been very successful. It's it's been fun, yeah. And then also the, the parade has been very successful. So, you know, if, if you are considering, my like, consideration is to be moving the day, um, you know, again, if, if it was to partner at the times that people are in the poor city, those would probably be the times, if that is a consideration. It is. All right, so we have a committee. We've had a 50% discount um, from 1175 down to 550, actually, which was what was pretty much um, half price. It's the same as all offers. And so it's about it's time to, to discuss the benefits and whether or not we're going to renew that for, the, for next year. Um, what you see um, on the chart is that the statistics of what it has done. And um, you'll see at the 550 discount on the bottom. Um, chart. The first comment is at 
the 550 discount, and the other one is at full price at 1175. And you'll see the numbers. Um, you'll see the ridership of the $5.50 um, discount was 104, which is 3.5% of the total ridership of these three days, which was 5% of the um, 3,006 trips. If you add the 104 and the 292. So again, it's just asking the board to want to continue this program or do you not? Or Explain to me what this chart said. Okay, on the left side, the left side is the, uh, the 550 discount for the last 10 months. The first column is basically, you'll see it's split two in two parts because it was one was part of one fiscal year, one was part of another. So I would look at the bottom total. The bottom total is the 10, 10 month total. So the 104 shows that 104 trips were taken under the $5.50 discount. Next to it is 227 passes. And then the revenue is to the right, the 1,200. The revenue is 12% of the total revenue. If you look at the right, those are the number of the 1175, the full fare. So the full fare had 2,900 trips. It, it has 784 passes. That's over a long period of time. That's, That's over the 10 month period, correct. Didn't sell them both. They're still both sold, yes. Who did we make the discount For the elderly, the Joe? The disabled, the elderly. So we only sold the discount for people offered to everybody. I don't understand. Did we offer the discount to everybody or just to the Medicare? I know that's who the discount here is at Fallmark. This particular program. Which just for those that group? That I'm, uh, I'd have to look more into it. That's what I understood it to be. It was for the Medicare and the elderly uh, and the uh, over 50. You're telling me that, that we don't. Already got discounted. 
Not on the three Yeah, on the bus. The deal with the bus. So you supply the same principle to this Correct. 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 And in your opinion, did it, what effect did it have? Because we don't see last year's numbers. So we can tell us. And if we said, okay, keep it up, if we said, if we said cut the rate burn out too, you have to go through. Mm -hmm. Yes. For us, we don't have public hearings in our repairs, do we? Your fares. Mm -hmm. um, just just a comment on doing too much with fares. Um, there's no such thing as free money, and so I'm quite sure that uh, whatever grant money we get will be tied somehow to grant structures or rate structures. So I, I wouldn't be getting too cavalier with with dollars until we know where we are. So I, I would. You're lucky. It is. I would. Just because um, I, I believe that the federal government will have some suggestions about how much we should charge. If you take more of their money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can continue this as a pilot? You can continue it as a pilot. Two more months. And then two more months because it's up for a year. Yes. Yeah, if they can't continue for you another year, another year. I don't, I don't know the legalities of it, but I know when we had talked to the schools, the pilot program was for one year. I don't know if that could be renewed. Oh, yeah, we can. Oh, okay, so we can pilot for another additional X amount of time. We want to do it for another two months, another four months, another six months. Um, I guess my recommendation would be if we wanted to, if the board wanted to continue it, it, it would be in a, in a shortened time frame to coincide with the discussions going on with the city. How Maybe about like six could, months. What if we continue it to the end of this budget year? Because by the time that you know, we start the next budget year, this year will be through September 30th. Does that make sense to you? <coughs> Dolphins in Clearwater. 
or the turtles or whichever is in the animal you've seen in the mold. Um, I'm say between 20 and 30 of them, hopefully more, but that's our minimum guarantee around the streetcar line. So downtown, Channel District, Ybor City. So it's really just to kind of bring it to you and show you what we have in mind so that way if you hear about it and send home with um, there's no request from the board. <coughs> uh, if you'd like to get involved, please feel free to do so. I will be here after the meeting. That's great. Do you have any questions about yeah, when's it supposed to work? In October. In October. So we were hoping to, we were hoping to tie it. <laughs> that was our intent. That was our intent. So Let's figure out that date too. <laughs> uh, along with Design Week and uh, several other events that are all happening that mid October date. Well, on Valentine's Day, it might be the only wonderful thing to do. There will be a preview party for uh, yeah, the Yacht Star Ship. Um, Fernandy is really off the board as well, so we're no pun intended, not pun intended. Um, but we're very excited to so. Uh, the airport is designing one that will actually have some wings on the side of it. Really? Yes. So, so how do you solicit people to actually do some new There are 30. And I've yeah, sold three of them so far, so I got to get on selling. <laughs> um, no, but we've got a lot of commitments from folks, but you know, to go, we had to get commitments to then go create the form and get the process started. So. How did I get those commitments? Um, just a lot of reaching out through pretty commercial real estate women and, and local connections. And everyone seems to want to support the strip It is a great opportunity for our to firm. Is that correct? Um, and it's, it's not, I mean, for $1,500, you can sponsor a streetcar and show your love for the city and, and have it on display for a year. And then at the end of that year, the sculpture becomes property of your, yourself. You get to take it back to your office or potentially keep it on display. You know, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. so these, these uh, sculptures go on a, a private property on the edge of right away or are you working in the city as public art? Combination of it all. So, we, you know, we have some history with it. We did art lab in previous years where we installed about 16 to 18 sculptures. Um, but none of them were on the same platform, same mold. Each artist got to design it themselves, and a lot of them were recycled metals and such. And most of them stayed right in the core of downtown. So we really like the opportunity this year to branch out more into the Channel District of Deep City. Um, so quite a few. We have a rough draft of the map of where we kind of anticipate, and we've had some verbal discussions with folks. Um, but I know. For instance, we've been talking to the Channel District CRA about helping support the cause, and they are on board. They'd like to see many more sculptures in the Channel District. So we have to kind of reevaluate. This is just kind of a draft. And then we have to work with the city for actual right of way permits and where they'd like to see them. And hopefully, some along these yellow dots go on. At the stations. Yeah. If there's any feedback or questions or ideas that you have, please let us know because we are definitely in planning mode and we just started to switch out and I want to bring it to this first. Thank you so much for doing this. They will be big. They will be on concrete basis that can be moved at any time. But heavy enough that people will just put the holes in the Yeah. All right. So maybe you could take them all. I think you probably will for part of the unveiling is have them all together to create that impact. I have some pictures from the Clearwater product project, and they did exactly that. Have one item to report to the board. Uh, the quote, good news and bad news, if you recall, 
Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Palin uh, have filed a lawsuit against uh, of THS in the city for injuries she allegedly suffered uh, in the process of getting off of uh, one of the streetcars. Uh, our insurance carrier has agreed to defend us in that lawsuit. Uh, so the good news is we will not have to spend any of uh, our funds in order to defend against the lawsuit. Uh, it's in its early stages. Uh, at this point, no discovery has really been completed. We don't know much about the merits of the claims. But uh, I'll have an opportunity probably in the next couple of months to report back to you what's going on. And you're keeping the city attorney apprised? Uh, we're in communication. The city attorney, um, the city was also sued. Uh, so we've, we've been in discussions about how we can try to cooperate with each other. But it was technically adverse that they, they think it's our responsibility and we think it's theirs. Uh, well, even though we've got the enemy, we have them. I guess. Uh, you know, as, as, the, the lawsuit will probably not be resolved prior to the dissolution occurring, so they may have to figure out how to deal with that. Um, unless maybe we can get together and figure out how to settle it. Did they make, did they make an actual claim? Yeah, they filed a lawsuit. No, but I mean, they paid a specific amount. Uh, no, we've not received a claim for a specific amount. Okay, everybody saw this. New York City, five million dollars for a spring ankle. Well, Bill Terry is the attorney that's handling it for the city, so we've agreed to try to cooperate to the extent we can. And okay. at some point, we'll go to mediation. Uh, exactly when that will occur, it's going to depend on the course. Do you know what the nature of the injuries were? I mean, were these serious injuries? Thank you.